Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another guide slash tutorial for Farming Simulator 19. I am so fond of this game, I actually decided to start a proper let's play on this map where we are gonna work ourselves from the bottom up. So I'm not gonna cheat in any money or so, I literally did that in order to be able to make this tutorial series and show you a little bit about the magnificence of this game. Now the status on this map is at the moment I'm owning much more land, of course not everything is legitimate, I did get a little bit of help and I don't feel quite as accomplished as if I were to do everything from scratch with the limited funds that we have and everything. And since I'm basically playing this game whenever I can at the moment I thought we should do a let's play. In this video I just want to quickly show you a couple of principles with the global company asset that is in this map and also as a mod. But also show you more of course play and auto drive, just how freaking awesome those are. The status in this safe game at the moment is I have a couple of trailers and everything that I need. I even set up a bunch of these signs so I can see what I have in my storages. Those are pretty handy. The same thing on the big silo over here. So far I only did wheat and barley as you can see but you actually get a tons and tons from the big field. Now before we do anything else, let's have a look at the global company stuff. What you can do is click Ctrl G in order to get into the global company menu. This basically lists everything that you own that allows you to store or produce something. For instance, if I have a quick look at the map, we bought the fertilizer plant right there. So there is something I can do. And if I hit Ctrl G and look at the fertilizer plant, then go into open overview menu, I can see the different productions there are. So for instance we can produce our own fertilizer by bringing in manure or compost. Obviously you have to own this factory otherwise it's not gonna work. We can also produce liquid fertilizers and herbicide. This is an already more complicated matter. However there is also the seeds production right here with wheat and some fertilizer. You can get out some seeds and then the lime production only requires a little bit of water. All of this is really good news because there are tons and tons of factories around. So you can buy the sugar factory for instance or the bakery and everything requires the different resources. So you don't just grow the fields and then sell the raw wheat. You actually might want to use it for certain productions. For instance, let's have a look at the oil mills. If I just purchase this very briefly and then hop into the global company, we can check out the oil mill right there and we can see there are three oil productions soybean, sunflowers and canola oil. We also need empty pallets for that and if we wanted to get those pallets for free, we would have to go ahead and purchase the sawmill I believe and then I actually didn't test this out. Maybe let's go ahead and purchase that as well. Uh, oh, I do not have the money for that. <laughs> okay. But my point is there is a production chain going on on this map. So we create the pallets here, bring them all the way over into the oil mill and start producing with our crop. Now until you own more stuff and can actually create everything in the production chain, you always have the option to buy a bunch of pallets yourself. So for instance, we could go ahead and purchase about 5,000 liters of pallets for 8,632 euros. So if I go ahead and uh, purchase this, yes, thank you very much. We can see this is 1% full now and theoretically we could now create a bunch of soybeans and then we could go ahead collect those pallets and then sell them at a selling station for the highest price. And you know, just looking around the map, there are so many things, so many factories we can purchase and actually make really great production chains out of it. And this is why I would like to start a proper let's play of this map. I'm really hooked right now and I want to feel a little bit more accomplished than just, you know, being able to get this huge field in the beginning. Even though if you do a normal start of this map, you own a lot of stuff that gives you around 5 to 6 million bucks. You also own field 22, 23, 31 and 32 in the beginning. You have tons and tons of tractors and machines and it just doesn't feel as satisfying to me as if I'm starting from scratch and I actually have to make my way there. Anyways, right now I'm growing some more barley and you can see all of my waypoints here and I just want to show you a little bit of the automation you can achieve using course play and auto drive a little bit better than in the previous video. And by the way, this playlist is still gonna continue whenever I feel like I want to do a tutorial on something, I'm actually gonna use this world and I'm not gonna be hesitant to cheat in this world. However, the other one, the let's play safe game is gonna be completely legitimate. Currently we have some weeds going on and we also need to fertilize it a little bit but I'm gonna completely ignore that. I'm just gonna go ahead and wait until it is grown. 
so that I can show you what I believe is going to be the optimal combination to harvest one of these fields completely automatically. Alrighty, it is a fresh new morning, the barley has grown, of course, wheat and everything, not fertilized, but let's not focus on that, let's hop into our harvester. I've set up a whole bunch of waypoints, actually everything is hooked up and it is extremely convenient, I have to say. So in the field section, I'm gonna find field 22 start. This is where we want to send our combine to. I also made two more waypoints at my field and I'm gonna show you exactly how we are gonna treat those. Now the combine is gonna drive there automatically, so we can already go ahead and hop into one of our trucks. You can actually see all of my waypoints here, everything is hooked up and it's gonna be parked automatically. Now there's one thing I didn't realize in the previous episode, you can actually assign a parking spot for your trucks for instance, but as soon as they have an attachment, the parking spot is gonna be for the attachment. So right now I don't have a parking spot for my truck, but if I get the attachment, you can see the parking icon now turned white. This essentially means each attachment can have its dedicated parking spot. I don't have to remember it, I can just send it to be parked and it is absolutely glorious. Anyways, I got this trailer in order to bring the crop as it is being harvested from my fields all the way into my silo. I can also use this in order to sell, but my point is... I want to send this to the loading point of my field. So this is the spot that I have set up for this. Let's go ahead and send this guy. Now, in order to be more efficient, I will want another truck right there and also a secondary trailer. And of course, this is expensive. This is just to make things a lot faster. Let's go ahead and hook up this guy as well. And then I'm gonna send him to the field's uh, loading point as well. There we go. Now, there is a third thing we're gonna require and I'm gonna pick that up with my tractor right there. You can see all of these waypoints that I set up here. It is just absolutely magnificent how everything works automatically once you have set it up. It really becomes more of a management game and it just makes it so much more fun because there's potentially no limit as to what you can achieve in a single player world. So I'm really hoping the Let's Play will catch on so that we can make tons and tons of episodes on it. So if you want to see that, don't forget to tune in and support the algorithm a little bit. I bought myself this grain cart right here. This is so convenient. I can use that in order to empty my harvester and then I'm just gonna go to my trucks in order to load stuff up. I want to go ahead and send this tractor to field 22 start. It needs to be the same waypoint my harvester is going to use. Now you can see my trucks are hanging around here and there are the two points, the load point and the delivery point. And I'm gonna explain that in just a second once we got the harvester full the first time. Now, of course, we should go ahead and actually prepare the attachment. So I'm just gonna plop that down right there and we're gonna attach it to the harvester. There we go. Thank you very much. I'm gonna send him back to field 22 start. And now that we're here, we wanna open up course play. Now, I believe I've already got courses. No, actually, I deleted them. So now I can properly show you my findings. We want to go ahead and make sure we are in the right mode. So in this case, it is going to be field work. So this icon right here. And then I want to go ahead and generate a course. We want to click field 22. And now the way I've done this or, you know, with my experimentation, I just figured out there are ways to deal with that field much quicker. I mean, much quicker. You can shave off like 20 to 30 minutes sometimes if you set these settings right. My combine at the moment is facing downwards. I could have maybe parked it upwards so I can harvest in a clockwise direction and therefore the pipe is always going to be on the outside of the field. But since it is facing down, we're going to do this anti-clockwise. We want to activate headland right there. Now the headland passes I'm going to set to as high as possible. If you have set them too high, it's going to be visible right here because it's going to look really weird. And sometimes course play will even adjust it. But Generally, it is much faster with a field like this to just go all the way around and never having to reverse or backtrack or anything. It can just do one loop after another and it's not gonna waste any time. As mentioned, we wanna go ahead and do this counterclockwise and then start working on headland passes. We want the headland corners smooth. I believe that will give me the best settings for this field. Sometimes you have to fiddle around with it a little bit, then the width has been detected automatically. So let's go ahead and generate this course, see how it looks. There we go, there it is, you can see how this works. We are going around, then at this point we're just shifting over into the next row and so on and so forth. And then somewhere in the center it's still gonna do a little bit of a up and down pattern, but that's definitely better than doing the up and down pattern all the time. 
We can even test whether or not we can set up a bunch more headland passes, generate another course and see if that changes anything. In certain instances it's just gonna drop back, yeah look at that, 11 seems to be the maximum headland passes we can make. We could then experiment around with the field center, we could try a racetrack instead of the up and down pattern and we can see this seems to be even better so it's only gonna, you know, fool around a little bit here at the very end. Good, with that track generated, let's go back. We obviously would want to save that. In my case, I'm not doing this right now. And then we want to make sure that we use auto drive. Well, actually with the harvester, we don't want to use auto drive. And we want to start at the first waypoint. We don't have to really take care of anything else. This means we're going to go ahead and drive this course. We can go ahead and shut this off as well. And then it's just going to do its thing. It's going to start right there, harvesting, going to do the first headland pass. And it's going to be an absolutely amazing feeling. Now it's time to hop into the tractor and prepare this guy. What we want with this is obviously collect all of the material that is in the combine and then automatically bring it to both of my trucks. And the reason we have two trucks, I'm going to show you in just a second. We then want to go ahead and switch auto drive to the harvesting mode or unload combine mode. And our target needs to be the same target that is set in the combine. Otherwise they are not going to communicate with each other properly. Unloading obviously is not going to be wash and repair. It's going to be a deliver in field 2. So right next to my trucks. Once that is set, just to be sure, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit so it's not gonna do an entire loop in order to get back to the field start. It should just go ahead and do that, then stop and wait for the combine call. Looks like the combine already called it, but with fields as large as this one, it's just going to result in many issues. So there are gonna be planning path issues and usually it only works once the combine comes to a halt and actually extends the pipe. However, imagine you don't have to tend to everything. Of course, it's not going to be as quick as if you were to unload the combine yourself. But in my opinion, it's going to be absolutely worth it because I then can take care of something else myself and do whatever I please in the meantime. In the settings, I could tell the helper not to drive through the fields, which is not always working, which I believe is the reason they disabled the crop destruction for the helper. So if I were to drive this myself, obviously the crop would go down the drains. However, right now we are unloading the combine. I set this tractor to unload as soon as we get two entire loads of the harvester, which should be around 80% or so. So we just have to wait for another load now. Once that happens, I'm going to be right back to show you what happens. Actually, what I also appreciate about this mod is that they turn off the engine as soon as they have nothing to do for a while. Right now, it's just waiting for the call, not wasting any fuel. And there we go. We are unloading the combine for the second time. There's a setting that I want to show you. Now, I just accidentally clicked another vehicle. We want to hop into the settings and for the tractor, I want to set field exit at the behind the start. Yeah, let's go ahead and apply this. And the reason we want to do that is so that he gets out behind the trucks. At least that is what should happen in theory. Depending on your network, he might take a little bit longer in order to find the start point. I would recommend to draw a blue line, so into both directions, right around the field, making some points accessible. Now, I just noticed a little mistake that I've made. I obviously should go ahead and connect these two lines. So the delivery point is also connected. So that obviously is my bad. But if we go ahead and enable this guy now again, he's going to go to the delivery point, as you can see right there. And as soon as he approaches the truck, he's going to attempt to fill it up. Obviously, the cover of the truck should be opened up, but that was just because I haven't set them up in the right mode. Now that the tractor has finished emptying, it's storage, it is gonna go ahead, go back to field 20 to start and then back unloading the combine. As for my trucks, they need to go into the pick up and deliver mode right here. We wanna go ahead and pick up stuff at the field 22 load and then we wanna go ahead and deliver them to our unload silo point. Not fertilizer, silo right there. And at the moment we are harvesting barley. So right here, if I set this up, he's gonna actually do a little turnaround because, well, as soon as you're on the waypoint and set to go to this waypoint, they are gonna continue driving. If I wanted to prevent this, I just have to backtrack a little bit so they stop here at this point again. But I want my other truck that is already a little bit full to be in the front so I can show you how he is going to deliver it. So I'm also gonna set this to pick up and deliver pick up right here at this spot where he is right now. Unload at my silo and then we wanna do barley. 
In the meantime, my first truck is on his way back and you will be able to see that he opens up the covers by himself because he's expecting to be loaded here. And uh, there we go. We are now waiting for the delivery and he's even shutting down the engine, I believe. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. The other truck should tag along soon and in the meantime, my tractor is emptying the combine some more. Now we are a second time full with this wagon. You can see he's driving straight to field 22 start and then, or well, behind field 22 start and then he's going to unload again. And what happens next is just absolutely amazing. There we go, unfolding the pipe and hopefully we are close enough to actually deliver this. I might want to set the waypoint a little bit closer so the trigger is more perfect on there. However, now as soon as the truck reaches 80% load capacity, he's gonna continue driving. Uh, there we go, okay, you can see he actually starts driving now even though this is not empty yet and this is why we have two trucks. So we can do this as quickly as possible and start loading up the other truck so this guy can take care of the combine again. But now let's head into the truck and see where he delivers this. We're just following the waypoints here across the first part of the farm. And now we are making our way through the network to our silo unload point. As soon as he gets close to the trigger, he's gonna slowly creep forward. And when he reaches the trigger, he's going to unload immediately. So that should be happening right now. Come on, come on. There we go, getting everything into the silo. Now obviously as soon as that has happened, he's gonna go back to field 22 load point. And there's gonna be practically no downtime in this case. So creeping forward some more until he reached the silo unload point and then he's gonna cover up again and go back to the loading point on the field. It is just absolutely glorious. And yeah, these mods convinced me to actually start a let's play on this series. You know, after a while I always found it a little bit too tedious, but if we can do things like this and completely automate it, just having to manage it a little bit, this is gonna be amazing. Look at this guy, they are still working over there. It's just absolutely wonderful. And now we are just waiting behind the first truck, ready to be loaded up again. Oh, I just love this, so I'm really looking forward to the let's play and I'm really hoping you do that too and you're going to be with me in order to start from scratch, not cheat in any money and just deal with what we have available to us. There's still gonna be a couple of mods in the joint, however I will feel much more accomplished once we are at the stage I am right now. Of course I already have too many vehicles, but as I said this is kind of a weird start on this map. You start with an awful amount of equipment if you do a normal start on this map and I, I it just doesn't feel the same to me I kind of want to earn it but for the tutorial series I would have to play too much off camera in order to make it worth it so I decided to make this the GD world and then we are starting also a legitimate let's play world but yeah I guess we're gonna continue this series soon as soon as I have something to show you that I find of interest but with that out of the way thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it have a great time and see you in the next one bye bye